and set a booby trap. Pull a grenade out, put a piece of wire across the uh, trail, and, uh, and, and put the grenade in, in a little pocket of dirt in the ground, and uh, we start running. And in 20 minutes, we hear it go off. Then we run again. So we ran for two nights, or two nights and two days back to Quezon. And I wake up running sometimes. I'm running in my sleep. Um, and I had shrapnel in my legs, and uh, not, not bad, but you know, enough to get a Purple Heart. And I got, that was my first Purple Heart. One first battalion, third Marines, went back to Okinawa for retraining. And I was transferred into another battalion. And the battalion I was transferred into was 1st Battalion, 9th Marines. And 1st Battalion, 9th Marines uh, was, a, um, was a bad place to go because their nickname was called the Walking Dead because you didn't stand a chance if you were in there. You were going to die. You're going to get hit, wounded or dead, one of the two, because you weren't going to survive it. The Walking Dead. Um, they earned the title. They, wasn't given, they didn't choose it. It was earned. To, um, it, had, it all ended up okay, though, because I survived the whole thing. When the guys who went back to Okinawa and then came back to Vietnam, the guys I knew, most of them were killed. Later, six months later, there were most of them killed. So if I would have gone back to Going up, there was a prisoner. We caught a, a prisoner. We caught this guy. And we had him in our possession. His arms were tied behind his back. And he went running. He took off running. And he ran down a paddy, dike, his rice paddies on both sides. He ran down the dike in the middle. And uh, a guy named Sergeant Wade, which is a good, good fella, got three, had three kids. Sergeant Wade was a good guy. He never, he never bullied people. He always did, did stuff. Well, Sergeant Wade, instead of shooting him, I tried to shoot him because I was trying to get a shot at him. And Sergeant Wade stepped up on the paddy. I started, they were both running directly away from me. I couldn't shoot. The Sergeant Wade was on the paddy. Well, this gook stepped off the paddy dike and then stepped back on it again and keep on going. And I started to open my mouth at yell Sergeant Wade, there's a, uh, a mine there. And he stepped on it and he took him 15 feet in the air and tore both his legs off. Um, and he, you know, he's on the ground screaming. And, um, and at that time, the, the, the Viet Cong opened up from a tree line about 80 yards away. At the, as soon as the mine went off, they opened up, the, they saw their friend running. They opened up from the tree line. The corpsman, uh, Doc Glass, that was running toward Sergeant Wade to help him, ran across part of this paddy, and his me medevac bag, or his aid bag, got shot out of his hand. One of the rounds caught. His rounds were hitting all around him. And one of the rounds took the bag out of He was resting. He didn't have it over his shoulder. He was carrying it in his hand. Took him out of He stopped, took two steps back, grabbed his bag, and, and, and continued on. And then he stepped on a mine and went up and took his foot off. It was a little plastic mine called a toe popper, we call them. It was a little plastic mine, you couldn't, you couldn't see it with a uh, mine detector and stuff. It was plastic, about that big. It was meant to uh, disable more than to kill, just to kill. But Doc Glass stepped on a toe popper, and he went up. And then uh, Doc Rudolph went to Doc Glass first, and Doc Glass refused treatment and pointed to Sergeant Wade. And Doc uh, Rudolph went over to Sergeant Wade, and he, Sergeant Wade lived a pretty long time because of the blast cauterized his leg so he didn't bleed out but he was all fucked up I mean his you know his general was gone he was just you know he, he was just he was screwed up anyhow what happened was we caught the prisoner back and then uh, he got beaten to death uh, rifle butts um, I don't remember really doing it but I probably did because I ended up I remember cleaning my rifle butt it had blood and, uh, and, and brains on my rifle butt at the end of that I remember um, so I probably there's three or four of us that did it, uh, but we just beat that little motherfucker up. I mean, we, we killed him, but it knocked his head into, into a, a flat thing. So that was the start of The Walking Dead. Everything like, yeah, but I never really, really looked at, uh, at it, was the war justified or any of these other things like that. I, I don't think the war was justified. I think we fought it for the wrong reasons. I think anything that's done for the wrong reasons is going to be screwed up. Anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you know, I, I would hope that we had learned a lesson from it, but I don't think we did. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware that, it, we saw, the first time I heard about anybody protesting anything at all, a woman named Martha Ray, she was an entertainer. She came, she helicoptered in 
to a little hilltop that I was sitting on outside of Quezon, out in the jungle. And she spent 45 minutes with us and told us that we were better than any of the protesters in the states that were protesting. Well, protesting what? Who the hell? What's she talking about? Nobody knew what the hell she's talking about. She's, you know, and all, what we were doing, we were just like looking at this middle-aged woman that was a round-eyed woman. We ain't seen a round-eyed woman in six months, you know. And here she is. She ended up. She she landed with army utilities on. She left wearing Marine Corps utilities. Said you're not going to get on the helicopter unless you put these on. You're going to. You're in the Marine Corps now, and and and, and so Martha Ray. She always. She was a USO performer with Bob Hope and all that kind of. She thought. You know. She praised us and everything. But you know, uh, history didn't uh, didn't really. She said that we were better than the uh, than the protesters back in the states that were protesting and everything. We were better people. But you know, when it comes down to down to it, the people who were protesting back in the States got a, they had a hell of a lot better life than most of the combat veterans that I know did. Because they weren't burdened by post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they didn't, um, they didn't have the baggage that we had to carry the rest of our lives. So, um, it's, the philosophical part about, uh, of, of the, of the Vietnam War, uh, I guess it's probably best done by philosophers. Codman grunts, they don't, have the, they don't have the luxury of doing it. They just, you know, all you got to do is you're living from day to day, moment to mo moment, trying to stay alive. That's all that you got time for. Um, uh, you know, uh, after the movies. We talked about the yeah, movies before. Yeah, yeah. Vietnam movies. Well, some movies are realistic. Um, some aren't. Uh, 